We're gonna show you how to make mooch docking more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Gonna show you how to mooch dock like a pro. Like a boss. So what's the difference between boondocking and mooch docking? Well, mooch docking has the word mooch in it for a reason. <laughs> yeah. And that's basically because you're parking your RV on friends or family's land and you're mooching off of things like their water, their electricity, whatever it is you may mooch off of them. So therefore mooch docking. Mm -hmm. The key is resources, right? Mm -hmm. So you can see a buddy's house right here we're down here in florida for the holidays my parents actually stay right over there and we're actually using resources from both but what we're going to get into here is the resources you have available when mooch docking that you don't when boondocking That's right. namely water you have some water resources mm -hmm. uh, and tricks with that you've got maybe some wi-fi Mm -hmm. and various power options. And that's where we're gonna get into some cool nitty gritty yeah. how-tos. Yeah, many of you might not know that you can do this. So we thought it was important to share. Mm -hmm. This is something we've learned over the last two years. In mm -hmm. fact, right there is where we parked our RV. I think one of our yeah. first sites two years ago, almost to the day. Yep. And then we had nothing hooked up. We were really boondocking. We didn't know what we were doing. We didn't have the inverter. So we've learned a lot. We're yeah. going to share all these tricks with you. Yeah. And basically we have mooch docked in only two locations, but multiple times over the course of two years, mm -hmm. we mooch dock here and we mooch dock at my brother's house. Right. And it doesn't have to necessarily be at somebody's house. It can be anywhere where you have some resources like a, a standard 115 volt, 15 amp outlet available. Even that little bit can help out quite a bit when mooch docking. Okay. And when I say power resources, I'm not talking about somebody you might be camping at their house and they've got a really cool 30 or 50 amp hookup available. That that's, doesn't count. That doesn't count. <laughs> You're still mooch docking, but that's yeah. not what we're going to talk about because that's really no different than a campground. Right. And if they have sewer, again, you're like at a campground. So we're going to talk about each resource that you guys can exploit while you're mooch docking. Mm -hmm. We're going to start with water. So let's go check that out. Let's do it. Let's go. Bring the camera right along with us. <laughs> Water management when you're mooch docking is very similar to boondocking, but it does have some advantages. Right, and the biggest one is hopefully you have water available. If you don't have water outside from a spigot, then it's gonna be just like boondocking. Mm -hmm. But most places where you mooch dock, they got a hose line. Yeah, and if you're mooch docking, you can wait till you get here to hook up your water and you don't have to worry about fresh tank. You might wonder why even worry about hooking up water when you can bring your own. It's simple. You don't have to carry it in with you, which is a weight issue. And you also don't have to really worry about how much you consume because a lot of times the water you have available is less than the capacity of your gray tanks. Using your water resources at your mooch docking location isn't really that complicated. Hook it up just like you would at a campground. The key thing that I like about this way of doing it is you may have remember from our water management video, which we'll link up here using this meter. So the cool thing about this is I can tell exactly how many gallons we've used since we hooked up. I just reset it as soon as we hook up to zero and I can see that right now we're at 35.6 gallons. Say we've used 35 or 36.5 or somewhere around there. And again, that's gonna be a mix. There's no way to really tell how much is in our gray tanks right. because you know, you're using the toilet, you're using the dishes and you're dumping the water in the back toilet. Okay, we're not gonna cover a lot of this. Because we covered it in our water management slash double poop hose video. Bingo. I know. <laughs> you do wanna hook up a regulator like you normally would for water pressure, because you never know what you're gonna get. I think one of the biggest advantages when mooch docking. Definitely the showers. You can take advantage of your friends or family's showers. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's nice to be in a house shower every now and then. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're used to our bathroom and we our showers are perfect size. It's yeah. fine. But when you're limited on water storage or water resource, just go inside and take a shower. 
absolutely. Is it a little bit inconvenient to have to gather up all your stuff and walk over and use somebody else's shower? It is, but it's a lot better than, like you said, having to take quick Navy showers mm -hmm. and that's just miserable. So yeah, it's a bonus. You can just avoid that altogether. Yeah. Shower at your friend's house. Yeah. <laughs> Another tip is to spread the love between two toilets, if you have two toilets mm -hmm. in your RV. Yeah, if you got them, use both. Why fill up one black tank and not give the other some love? Yeah, and we actually have another really cool tip that we mentioned in our Lone Rock Beach boondocking video. And our water management video. And our water management video, but I think it's worth saying it again. Mm -hmm. So if you have two gray tanks like we do, the trick is to have a Valterra valve on the output of your dump hole. <laughs> <laughs> and close that valve and open up both gray tanks and let them connect in the middle. Again, this only works for certain RV configurations where you've got two gray tanks that connect out the same dump hole. And you know, we've had some comments about, well, what if one tank is higher than the other in the frame and won't that, you know, cause problems? No, because then one just fills up, then the other one fills up. I mean, you know, if you go above the level on the lower gray tank, it's just going to go into the tube. It'll be fine. Okay. I think that's it with the water. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple. Another benefit sometimes, depending on where you are, is Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. If they have a good connection, a good Wi-Fi, wherever you're boondocking, like when we stayed at her brother's house, mm -hmm. we hook our Wi-Fi Ranger up to the up upstream Wi-Fi of her brother's house. Again, watch our internet video. You'll see that our Wi-Fi Ranger basically encompasses our own internal Wi-Fi and then that connects upstream to cellular or Wi-Fi or whatever. Yeah, and when we are in locations like we are right now, we're kind of in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. So their Wi-Fi, isn't that great? <laughs> yeah. um, you know, it's our internet though. is a lot better in our RV than it is in the house and stuff, I think. Yeah, in rural areas, you know that sometimes getting good internet can be a problem. In fact, our internet is a lot better than his parents. His parents are struggling right now to be able to watch anything. Come on. Like Netflix or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So I feel kind of bad that we have all the all the Wi-Fi. We did we did try to share our Wi-Fi with them while we're here, but they're just too far away, so yeah. eh, too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it for the Wi-Fi? Yeah. Okay. Let's go inside and talk about power. Okay. A real quick note about 50 amp versus 30 amp RVs and just a brief overview of the wiring. Don't want to go into the weeds here and bore the crap out of you. A 50 amp RV really has two 50 amp legs. You're wiring in your RV, you've got one leg that has ACs and stuff on it, and then another leg that has ACs and stuff and microwaves. It splits it out into two 50 amp legs, which really makes a 50 amp RV a 100 amp RV. Mm -hmm. But it's not 100 amps total, you can't do 75 and 25, it's just... It has to be 50 and 50. Exactly. Okay. That's going to come into play when we start looking at how to hook up to your resources at your mooch docking location mm -hmm. and connecting to 15 amp. So what about 30 amp RVs? <laughs> a 30 amp RV is all on one bus, one leg, 30 amps total. Not 60. Right, it's not 30 plus 30, it's just 30. So you're gonna find that when you're talking about a 50 amp RV, which are most of the larger RVs, you're gonna have to kind of think about what's on leg one and what's on leg two. You don't have to really do it so much under normal circumstances, but the things we're going to show you, you got to kind of think about what's there. Mm -hmm. So how do they know what's on what leg? Yeah, that's pretty easy. You look at your distribution panel. Okay. Most 50 amps are going to show you, they're actually going to have a top side and a bottom side, and you're going to have mm -hmm. a primary breaker in the middle, and everything on leg one is above it, and everything on leg two is below it. Cool. And they should be marked. If not, play around, figure out what they are, and label them. So do you recommend that they, they, they do this before ever hooking up to um, power from a mooch docking site. Yeah, just how, you just know. Just to know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because once we start getting into how to mooch dock and how to connect, you're gonna to wanna to know these things and you'll see why. First off, it's really good to have some way to know how much power, how many amps you're drawing on each leg. Mm -hmm. You might've caught our total electrical protection video and we highly recommend the Surge Guard products. Both the internal hardwired and the external units have remote displays that will show you both legs like this. Yeah, and you can still use your Surge Guard units when you're mooch docking. Yeah, they're gonna be there and they're gonna protect you regardless of what kind of power you're hooked up to. Mm -hmm. The key thing is knowing how much you're drawing because you're gonna to wanna to keep an eye on that and we'll show you that over here. Okay, let's do it. So you may have seen some of our control panel central in here before. 
The key things that we're going to kind of focus on when we're talking about this are our surge guard unit right here, where you can actually see line one and line two, both the voltage and the amperage being drawn. We're also going to focus a little bit on our inverter once we get into some of the advanced hybrid stuff and our battery monitor. We're not really going to mess with that. First, we're going to talk about the most basic of mooch docking power, and that is straight 15 amps. Yes, this was actually the method that we were using for quite a while when we were mooch docking at my brother's house mm -hmm. in his driveway, and then... I decided to experiment. Yeah. So this is the most basic way, mm -hmm. and you want to remember that hooking up to 15 amp is just like hooking up a 50 amp RV to 30 amp in that both lines are connected and you've got 15 amps total for your entire RV. That's very limited, mm -hmm. uh, but we found that a lot of times that's all we needed to maybe run the AC and TVs and stuff at night. Right. A lot of times for us, one of the biggest downsides to mooch docking or boondocking is having to run the generator at night when you're trying to watch TV or trying to sleep. Right. We can definitely run most of our electronics off of the inverter. Mm -hmm. We can even run our AC off the inverter, but that drains the batteries fast. Yeah. When we're boondocking out west, it's not as big a deal because we can just open the windows. Mm -hmm. But when we're back east and it's summertime. Or when we're back east like we are right now and it's wintertime, but <laughs> yeah. it's still really hot. Yeah. You still want that AC at yeah. night sometimes to, to stay comfortable. So let's talk about the basics. Let's go outside. I'm going to show you how to hook up straight 15 amp. Speaking of humidity. Yeah, let's, let's go. go. So you might say, how do you connect your 50 amp RV plug? I'm out of the <laughs> How do you connect your 50 amp RV plug to a wall outlet? You need two adapters, really you only need one, but we recommend two and here's why. The first adapter you're gonna want is a 50 amp to 30 amp adapter. Again, you remember where I talked about 30 amp only has a, a hot and a neutral and a ground, whereas you have four connections on 50 amp. So really all this thing does inside here is bridge the two sides, the two hots, and put a 30 amp plug on there so you can plug this in to 30 amp. Mm -hmm. But we don't have 30 amp, we're mooch docking. So, da -da -da -da. boom. This takes your 30 amp down to, to a standard 15 amp. And this is the most basic. And the reason I like to have two adapters because they do make adapters that will go straight from 50 amp to 15 amp. I just like the flexibility. You know, sometimes you do want your 30 amp and then you don't want to have a 50 to 30, a 50 to 15, and then a splitter, which we're going to show you. This gives you flexibility. So there's that. Okay. It's right there. It's right there. <laughs> and then there's this. You see that there? And then boom, 50 amp to 15 amp extension cord and boom, that's it. So let's go back inside and take a look at what we can do with a straight 15 amp connection. Yeah, as Next you can side. see, it goes all, all the way <laughs> there. Okay, we're back inside. We've got 15 amp hooked up. Have you heard that clunk? That is the timeout on our surge guard. I think it's 126 seconds. And now we're connected. And this is where I was talking about you want to have this to be able to manage and see what you're doing, see what's pulling. If you look right now, you can see we've got three amps being pulled on line one and one amp being pulled on line two. We're good. And you'll notice that because they're bridged, it's the sum of the two. When we get into the advanced split 15 plus 15, we'll talk about them separately. Right, and obviously we turned off the ACs and stuff before we did right. this. So when you're doing this mooch docking, it's a lot like boondocking in that your appliances that you can switch to propane do that. So we have our refrigerator on propane and our hot water heater. Our hot water heater is actually off, and then we just turn it on when we need it. Yeah, um, sometimes we forget. Yeah. You want to remember amperage is drawn. You know, you supply voltage and then whatever is there using it draws amps. So that's why you'll see a different number on line one and line two, even though they're bridged. The voltage is bridged, the draw of the current is separate. Let's turn on an AC. And much like boondocking, <laughs> yeah. much like boondocking when you're running off the generator, uh, you sometimes want to start your ACs staged, meaning 
kick the fan on, let that spin up, mm -hmm. and then kick on the compressor. So you go to fan mode and then AC mode separately so you're not drawing a whole bunch of current at once because you can pull maybe up to 20 amps or so, you know. And then... Yeah, if it pulls it for a little bit too long, you blow the breaker mm -hmm. and you're outside resetting breakers. So let's go turn the AC on. So I'm gonna go fan high. Let that spin up. Wait a second, let the amperage settle. I'm gonna set it to cool. And then we hope for the best. <laughs> All right, so now we can see that the compressor is on and running and we're pulling 13 amps on leg one. Leg one is where our primary AC is, and we're only pulling about an amp on leg two, so we're at 14 amps. So we could run like this as long as we need to. Mm -hmm. But in Florida, we often need more than one AC going. Right, which brings us to our next tip, 15 amp plus 15 amp split. Yeah. And for that, you have to shut the AC back off and go outside. No. <laughs> no. Let's go. For our basic 15 amp, we had a single 50 amp to a single 30 amp. We're going to get rid of that and we're going to use this. Woo! <laughs> single 50 amp. It's a dual. Yeah. Dual 30 amp. So this can come in handy if you're in a site that has a couple of 30 amp circuits available, but not 50 like the fairgrounds. When we were at the Florida State Fairgrounds, we had plenty of 30 amp connections available, uh, but no 50, so we could use something like this and do 30 plus 30. That's not what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about 15 plus 15, and all that is the same thing we showed you last time that goes from 30 to 15 times two. So Very cool. you can see what we've got here, two 15 amps to 50 amp. <laughs> This is going to give us not 30 amps total, but 15 on one leg and 15 on the other leg. Otherwise known as one AC and one AC. Two ACs. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get this hooked up. Okay. We're hooked up now. Let's go inside and see what we got. Turn those ACs on. Yeah, we're back inside, and this is on its countdown again from 126 seconds. Whenever you disconnect, reconnect power, the surge guard wants to give the power time, give it time to do its tests and do everything. Also, if your ACs were running and you disconnected and reconnected power, the timeout is to protect your compressors as well. Three, two, boom. Wow. <laughs> so now, just like before, this is going to kick in and you're going to see the inverter slash charger go from a negative number inverting to a positive number of charging. The big difference now is we have 15 amps available on each line. It's no longer the sum of both lines, but it's individual. Uh, so we have much more flexibility. So we're going to go turn on the AC because it's freaking hot. If you're curious, the fan by itself pulls about four amps. We're pulling five total on line one right now. Uh, we were already pulling about an amp just for stuff that's running. Just for stuff. Stuff. Kick the AC on. All right. Once the compressor kicks in, you see, boom, I don't know if you, you probably couldn't see it, but it jumped to 36 amps for one second and then back down again. Now we're running at 13, 13 14 amps on line one once the compressor settled and everything's running. And we're only drawing one amp on line two. So that means we could turn the AC on in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. I'll go do it. The bedroom or the garage, they're both on line two. You want to it's do It's gonna be probably hot up here right yeah. now, so. So you'll see that when she kicks that on, line two is gonna jump up. You see while the fan kicked in, it went to eight amps and then settled back down on four amps. Tell me when. Go for it, switch it. There it goes. Yeah, I heard it. I heard you it. probably caught that again since I was recording a little closer that it jumped up to 39 amps and right back down. And we're settled now at only 10 amps. I think the uh, front and rear ACs are maybe 12 or 1300 BTUs versus the 1500 BTUs of our main AC. But now we've got two ACs running along with all of our other stuff. Yay. And that's pretty cool. That'll get us through most summer days up north and most winter days down south. Yeah. Nighttime, we can get it by with just one AC. A couple of really, really important notes when you're connecting both legs to separate circuits. 
The biggest being separate circuits. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. can't have two 15 amp plugs in the same outlet. It, no. It's not going to work. You're going to blow the breaker. So when you're connecting to a house, you may have noticed that we have one connected to the main house and one an extension cord running way over. Yeah. When we were at her brother's, I ran one into the garage and one into the house. They have to be on separate circuits because no matter how you get there, if you try to pull more than 15 amps across the 15 amp breaker, it's gonna blow and it's mm -hmm. gonna shut everything off. Another key is GFI or GFCI, which stands for ground fault control interrupt which you may have noticed the little pushy button thing on your outlet yeah. like we have in there. Pushy button thing. The pushy button thing is a highly technical term. What happens is if you try to connect two plugs on the same GFI circuit and then back down the line, they're bridged inside that adapter outside, GFI says, whoa, I don't like that and it shuts off, so that won't work. So you have to have them on two separate circuits, non-GFI, and just play around with it. You know, we, we connected to her brother's house and here in the garage we're on a GFI circuit and over across the street we're not. So any tips on how they can determine what's on what circuit? Trial and error. That's it? Pretty much. Okay. In a house, electrical panels are sometimes going to be wired and labeled really well and most of the time they're not. Typically if you're going to be plugging, running some wires into a garage and plugging, plugging into two outlets in the garage, they're probably on the same circuit. Mm -hmm. You're probably gonna have to have one in the house way away from it. Yeah. Even on the other wall, on the other side of the garage is probably on the same circuit. The easiest way to tell is to connect them up and see when it blows. Yeah. Circuit breakers can be reset. If you connect to what you think are two different circuits and you fire up two ACs and a breaker blows, you're not on two separate circuits. Right. Can it do any damage to the electrical inside the house? That's a little bit of a tough question because if a house is wired properly, a circuit breaker is always going to blow before anything else. Yeah. Now, if your brother-in-law, sister-in-law, whatever, if their house and they've like put on this illegal extension that hasn't yeah. been properly wired, yeah. and rather than uh, blowing circuits, they just upgraded the breaker, not all the wiring, dad. Um, <laughs> if they've done some funky wiring in the house where they have perhaps gotten around an issue by putting a larger breaker in where they shouldn't. Use just, with caution. Use with caution. So one thing that comes into play when we're talking about all these different power scenarios is the inverter. Now I'm going to try not to go way into the weeds on this because otherwise we'd bore the crap out of you. Oh. How does this relate to our discussion of the uses of irony? These inverters can do a thing called hybrid mode. Hybrid mode means that you can tell your inverter how much power is available from shore power, and if you try to use more than that, the inverter will kick in and add more power to it, so you can actually, as long as your batteries can handle it, run more than just the shore power. So we could have right. 15 amp connected. And it's that's very cool, but it's also, there's a little catch. Yeah, this. yeah. And, and that's the part where I don't want to go too far into the weeds, but our inverter, as well as others that I found, only do hybrid mode on line one. So this kind of makes you have to start thinking about, okay, what have I got on line one? What have I got on line two? And, but this also helps when we have split like this, because I don't really have to worry about two separate lines mm -hmm. in that if I want to turn on something right now on line one, I can do that. Do you want me to try the microwave? Mm -hmm. Let's give it a shot. Okay. Uh, hopefully we don't blow things up. If you look here, you can see we've got 13 plus 12. We've got 25 amps being pulled, 13 on line one, 12 on line two. Tara's gonna put her coffee. <laughs> Tara's <laughs> gonna put her coffee okay. into the microwave. And we're gonna fire it up. And you're gonna see that the inverter is gonna kick in and jump up and supply the rest. So now we're still only pulling 13 amps on line one and the inverter is supplying the rest to run the microwave. Go ahead and Sweet. go ahead and kill it. Now you see the inverter drop down and go into charge mode. Zero right now, it has to time out. But we were able to pull more than 15 amps off of line one, but not really. The inverter kicked in. And again, this might get a little bit into the weeds. If you have any questions, please do feel free to comment below and we'll try to answer. That's really it. And again, experiment, mm -hmm. try to know a little bit about what you're doing. Definitely have a way to monitor your power on line one and line two so you can see what's going on. Yeah. Take a look at your breaker panel and understand what's on line one, what's on line two. It'll probably be wired in a way so that 
AC1 is on line one and AC2 and or three are on line two. Mm -hmm. They try to break those up so that you're not drawing more than 50 amps on one line. You might wonder, well, what if you, it's really hot in the summer in Florida and you need three ACs? For us, that's the generator. Right. Our generator is basically 45 amps, so we can run all three ACs off of it. We have to stagger start them kind of like we showed you, mm -hmm. but we have to do it three times, and then we can't turn anything else Nothing. on. And then <laughs> we'll forget and we'll start the microwave to warm up some coffee or whatever. Yeah, and kick and, the generator off. Yeah, so, you know, you just got to get used to it. It is always an adjustment, especially for me, when we go from full hookups to mooch docking or boondocking, because you do kind of forget that you have to yeah. limit yourself and monitor yourself a little bit more, mm -hmm. but no big deal. It's pretty easy. Yeah, and that's just RV life in general, mm -hmm. you know? You know, so you have to pay attention to your resources in an yeah. RV, whether it's water, whether it's power or whatever. Mm -hmm. We do have one little last bit of advice when it comes to mooch docking in general, mm -hmm. and that is make sure you find a dump station near where you're mooch docking so you can dump. <laughs> and before you get on the road for a long drive. I am. At the dump station. Yeah, so we were lucky that only a few miles away from where we were mooch docking is a state park in Florida. And so we had to pay the fee to get in and it came to about 15 bucks to get in and, and use the dump station, but it's well worth it. Mm -hmm. Mooch docking is the way to go if you can. Yeah, we saved some money. So that took our 2019 average down a little bit, which mm -hmm. is nice. Thanks, but... thanks, Doug and Tina and Cooper and Ethan and Abby. Yes, and your parents. And my parents. Yes. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this video. We hope it was helpful. And we hope that you'll subscribe to follow us along on more videos. Do it. <laughs> oh, he's bossy Do today. it now. I'm getting ready to do the dump thing. So we're, try I'm not, yeah. we're trying to beat the storm that's coming. So yeah, we're it's gonna... not looking... It's not looking great, yeah. and there's a big storm coming across the bay. Right, and we have to take the Skyway to where we're going next, so that's a Maybe. little bit. Maybe. We might have to go around, if, depending right. on the forecast. So anyhow, we're talking too much. He's got to get to the dump station. We hope you liked this video. If you did, please click like, follow us on Facebook, Instagram. What else? Website, changinglanesrv.com. That's right. Many times we will have additions and updates to our posts that you won't see on YouTube. Right, and as usual, we messed up a lot, so there are some bloopers coming right now. Boom. <laughs> Last word, I get it. <laughs> Man, it suddenly got freaking hot. Well, it's because hot. the sun came out. The sun came out and it's freaking blazing. Yeah. Why do you think that it's hotter? <laughs> You're having a rough time here. You're going to have to start all over. Again. Again. Take five. Take 12. <laughs> Sorry. I love you. <laughs> But some other advantages uh, in the realm of water management is... I don't know what I... Oh, I, showers. Oh, okay. Now it's the shower. Sorry. I, yeah. was, I was not listening to you at all. I was just zoning out and smiling. <laughs> <laughs> Which means I'm now pulling 30 amps. Am I getting too deep? Oh, gosh, yes. Okay, you can turn it off. Well, my coffee's not done. <laughs> it's not done yet. Hold on. Oh, it's so hot and sticky. It is freaking humid as hell. Mm. Just, oh shit, I wasn't recording. Shut up. Hold on. Shut your face. Yeah, let's do it again. What do you want? You might wonder, well, what if you want to run? Really? Good job. <laughs> Pay attention, know what you're using, and... <laughs> Has a mind of its own. If you saw anything that you want to buy in here, we have no. an Amazon store. No. Ha, ha, ha.